Greetings, I'm Professor K, and welcome to part two for lab 03, configuring a PSSense firewall on the client. If you have completed section one, the hands-on demonstration, you are now ready to move on to section two, applied learning. Step number one, on your local computer, create a lab report file. Once you have your lab report file configured, go ahead and click on where it says part one, planning the configuration of the firewall. Step number one, on your local computer, open the username psense-firewall-planner.xls spreadsheet that you saved in section one. Here's my spreadsheet. In section one, you did not specify a primary DNS server. However, you could have used one of two options. In the next steps, you will identify those options. Step number two, use the internet to locate Google's public DNS servers. If you go to any search engine and you type in Google DNS servers, you'll be shown the information that you need to input into that spreadsheet. The IP addresses are for the primary 8.8.8.8 and for your secondary 8.8.4.4. In our spreadsheet, underneath physical configuration, for the primary DNS, you can input 8.8.8.8 .8 and for the secondary you can input 8.8.4.4 step number three in the lab report record the ip addresses for the google dns server step number four using the shortcut in the connections folder launch the pfsense firewall administration interface here's the connections folder open that up here's the shortcut for pfsense open that up Go ahead and click in the box here for the username. You will have to type in the new password that you set for the firewall in the previous section, hands-on demonstration. Go ahead and click log in. Step number five, make a screen capture showing the current date, time, and the last config change on the PFSense firewall dashboard and paste that into your lab file. Whatever you see here will suffice for your screenshot. In the PFSense Firewall Administration Interface, locate the MAC address for the LAN interface. Let's scroll on down. Underneath Interfaces, click on LAN. Scroll on down until you come to the field for the MAC address, and you'll see that there's actually nothing in that field. But go ahead, take a screen capture, and you're going to paste that into your lab report file. That concludes Part 1. We're now ready to move on to Part 2, Configuring the Firewall. For part two, step one, launch the setup wizard and implement the following changes to the configuration you set in section one and then save the changes. To do this, we're just going to go up here to the menu and we're going to go into system. And from here, we're going to go down till we find setup wizard inside of the context menu. Go ahead and click next. Go ahead and click next. Here we're going to change the host name of the firewall to your name dash s2. So here where we see the host name field, I'm going to type in a dash along with an s2. Scroll on down. Here we see the fields that we can input that information about the Google DNS servers. For the primary, in the box, you're going to type in 8.8.8. .8 and for the secondary, you're going to type in 8.8.4.4. Go ahead and click next. Click next one more time. Scroll on down. Here we're told that we are going to block the Bogan networks. So go ahead and check that box. Go ahead and click next. Step number two, we're going to add a new LAN rule to the firewall with the following requirements, and then we will apply the changes. An important note here. If necessary, refer to the lab topology image to identify the IP addresses for the V workstation and the target Windows 01 machines. Now to do this, you're just going to go back on over here to the start page for your lab. You're going to scroll on down and here you're going to find an image for the topology. So you will need to refer to this topology image to fill in some of the missing information. Now to add a new LAN rule, we're going to have to go up here to the menu. We're going to click on Firewall. Underneath Firewall, we're going to click on where it says Rules. It's important that we add this Firewall rule 
to the LAN interface. So make sure you click on LAN. Scroll on down. We're going to be using the add button with the down arrow. Go ahead and click on that. You can leave everything at the default until you get down to the source IP. Here we're going to pull down the field where it says any and we're going to select single host or alias. And over here we're going to input the IP address for the V workstation. Again, we're going to have to refer back to our topology and the IP address for the V workstation is 172.30.0.2 and that will be using a 24-bit subnet mask. Let's go back on over here to our lab and here we're going to type in that IP address. Let's go ahead and confirm. Make sure you check yourself on this. Scroll on down until you come to the destination. And again, we're going to pull down the any field here. And we're going to select single host or alias. And the destination IP address is going to be the IP address for the target window 01 machine. Again, let's refer to our topology image. And over here, we see that the target Windows 01 server has an IP address of 10.20.1.2. Let's go back on over to our lab. And in this field, we're going to type in 10.20.0.2. This rule is going to allow the workstation to communicate with the server using RDP. Now, to do that, we have to tell it that it's going to be using Microsoft RDP. And if we open up the window, we see that it is located right here, MSRDP using port 3389. Scroll to the bottom of the page and click on Save. On the next page, you must click where it says Apply Changes. In the next step, you will establish an interface gateway to route the RDP traffic. Then attempt to open a remote connection to the target Windows 01 machine to test the new firewall rule. If you receive a connection error when attempting to access target 01, this means that your firewall rule was not implemented correctly and the firewall is still blocking your connection. Now to do this, we're going to have to add a route. So let's go ahead and click on the start button. From the menu, let's select command prompt. And we're going to type this in one word at a time carefully. So type in the word route. Check your syntax space add space 10.20.1.0 give it a space type in the word mask type in the subnet mask 255.255.255.0 give it a space now type in the IP address for our V workstation Let's go ahead and check our work. We typed in the word route, space add, the IP address 10.20.1.0. We're typing in a route that will allow the workstation to communicate with the 10.20.1.0 network. So once you have everything typed in correctly at the prompt and you have checked your work, just go ahead and hit enter. You may have to hit enter twice and you should come back with a confirmation that says OK. If you fat fingered the syntax, it won't take it. Step number five, open a remote connection to the target Windows 01 machine. If prompted, type the following credentials and click OK to open the remote connection. Let's go ahead and minimize our firewall here. Here's our RDP connection. So let's go ahead and attempt to connect to our server from the workstation using RDP. Go ahead and launch RDP. Give it a second. Looks like it's going to fail, which is fine. We we know that we we know that we configured a rule for RDP, so that's going to be our problem. Go ahead and close out this error message. Let's open up the PSN's firewall. Let's go on up here to the menu. Let's click on firewall. Let's go to rules. Let's click on LAN. Scroll on down till we come to the RDP. Move that slider all the way over. Click on that little pencil so that you can perform an edit. Scroll on down. And now you're going to confirm your information. 
So we know that the IP address for the workstation is 172.30.02. Confirm. 172.30.02. And that the destination IP address is 10.20.0.2. Let's go back on over here. Let's look at our target machine and it is wrong. 10.20.1.2. So let's go back on over to our firewall and let's make the correction. There you go. Now let's scroll on down. Let's do a save. Go ahead and apply the changes. And now we'll go ahead and close out the firewall. And we'll open up that RDP connection one more time. And now it's going to prompt us for a password. So we know it's working. So let's type in the password. Zero RD exclamation. And we're in. So we now know that our firewall rule did work. Step number six. From the target window zero system, launch a command prompt window. We can do that right down here from the taskbar. And we're now going to make a directory by typing in MD. I'll type in my username. You're going to type in your username. Go ahead and hit enter. Now we're going to change over to the folder we just created. So I'm going to type in CD. The name of the folder we just created. Hit enter. Notice our prompt changes to let us know that we are now in that folder. Step number nine. Make a screen capture showing the your name directory on the target window 01 and paste it into your lab report file. Number 10. On your local computer, save the updated spreadsheet as your name underscore pfsense dash fw dash planner dash s2 dash xls replacing your name with your name this completes section two of the lab and so that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about completing part two of configuring a pfsense firewall on the client you got any questions, you got any concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor. Thank you, and I'll see you in my next video.